Pope John Paul II nakita ng isang babae na nasa impyerno. Hello mga ka My name is Brother Adrian Milag and welcome again to my vlog. At kung first time mo dito sa aking vlog, make sure na mag-subscribe ka at click mo yung notification bell button sa baba ng video na to para lagi kang updated sa mga bagong vlog na gagawin ko. Alam nyo mga ka kalat na kalat itong video na to. Uh, di umano ng isang batang babae na nagkaroon siya ng deep sleep for 33 hours. Sabi niya dito sa video na yan ay nakapunta siya sa impyerno at doon nakita niya si Pope John Paul II. Okay, ang ating uh, Santo Papa at ngayon ay isa ng santo. At meron din siyang binanggit na mga ilang local celebrity at international celebrity na nakita niya sa impyerno. At ito mga ka pati pati mismo ang kanyang tatay ay nakita niya sa impyerno, gusto kong ipanood mismo sa inyo yung mismong uh, video ng batang to na nagbabiral ngayon sa social media. And mamaya, after nyong panoodin to, ay gagawang ko reaction itong video na to. Okay? Ano yung comment ko sa mga sinabi ng batang to? Okay? So, watch this video. Na, kung kumakanta sila doon, sumas, kumakanta din sila doon. Tapos, Kapag yung mga artista sila, Dolphy, yung mga si Pope John Paul, Michael Jackson, yung mga celebrity, nandun sila kung anong ginagawa nila dito, ganun din ginagawa nila dun sa impyerno. Hirap na hirap sila, humingi sila ng tulong sa akin. Sinabihan nila ako, huwag daw ako doon, hindi daw ako nararapat doon. Nakita ko yung papa ko, nandun siya. Nangingi siya ng tulong sa akin. Sinabi niya sa akin na, Anak, huwag ka dito. Masasaka pa. Hindi ka nararapat dito. Sabihin mo sa kanila. Ang lingkod sila. Dahil, dahil mahirap ang kalagayan dito. Sinabi niya yun sa akin. Nangingi sila kahit onti patak ng tubig. I ano lang daw sila doon. Tapos sa kita ko, sinabi sa akin ng demonyo, sinabi niya, huwag kang, huwag kang haharap, makikita mo yung hinahanap mo. Tapos yung sinabi naman na sa akin, tapos nakita ko yung papa ko doon. Yung papa ko kung anong ginagawa dito, ganun din ginagawa na doon. Tapos nakabuto-buto na siya, kalansay, tapos umaapoy siya. Tapos may nga, yung may tatlong demonyong nakaano sa kanya, nakapalibot parang dinadasalan siya tapos umiinom din siya doon tapos yung sinabi niya naman na huwag daw ako doon kasi hindi ako nararapat doon sa impyerno at may malaking malaking kamay doon na, na biglang nagsara yung ano lupa kinuha ni, bigla niya akong kinuha bigla niya akong inano doon malamig na malamig na kamay puting-puti. Tapos, ano, biglang yung nakita ko yung malaking-malaking ano sa langit, pinto, yung malaki gate na ano, tapos, dinadaanan na ginto, ginto yung dinadaanan ng mga tao, inaapakat, tapos puting-puti. Nakita ko yung asawa ng mga lapastor, nandun siya, nagdadasal, naka- talikod, mahabang buhok, nakaputi, nakataas yung kamay, nagdadasal siya doon. Tapos yung mga, mga hilsong, nandun, nakaka, naririnig ko doon sa langit. Tapos nakita ko yung mahabang lamesa na pinakamahaba talaga. Tapos, ayun, pinakita sa akin ng mga lapanginoon yun. Tapos nakita ko rin yung parang hindi na yung mga bulaklak para sumasayaw, tapos umaano, gumagalaw-galaw. Tapos yung ano naman, nakita ko yung yung ano, yung mga tao sa GMC, parang ganun din yung mga tao sa ano, sa 
ano langit pero hindi ko nakikita yung mukha nila ganun lang mga tao doon mahahabang mahahabang doho at alam nyo nung napanood ko yung video na yan, alam nyo bilang isang katoliko ay very disturbing yung video na yan. Gusto ko i-share sa inyo yung mga komento ko sa video na yan. And disclaimer lang mga ka na itong mga sasabihin kong komento tungkol sa batang babae na to, I'm not attacking yung, yung batang yan. Itong mga sasabihin ko is based on my belief as a Catholic. I will attack the issue not the person. Hindi ko naman ikikriticize itong batang babae na to kasi it's form of bullying yun. Ha? At hindi natin gagawin yun bilang katoliko. Yung mambubuli tayo lalo na ng mga bata. Okay? So, first of all, yung napanood natin ay it's a anti-Catholic propaganda. Okay? Obviously, isa yung anti-Catholic. Bakit? Kung napanood nyo buo yung uh, video na yan, binanggit nung bata dyan na nakita niya daw yung asawa ni pastor. Okay, so ibig sabihin, pastor is uh, part siya at ng family niya sa isang born again uh, church. Anti-Catholic propaganda yung video na yan. Kung uh, familiar ka sa dating nag-viral din about Angelica Sambrano, kung kilala mo to, siya din ay sinabi niya din doon na nakita niya rin si Pope John Paul na nasa hell at si Michael Jackson. Halos parehas na parehas sila ng testimonial ni Angelica Sambrano. At mismo, yung nangyari sa kanila na nakatulog uh, in a deep sleep. Kung hindi nyo alam, itong si Angelica Sambrano, actually matagal na ito nangyari, may nabasa ako na may psychological problem itong si Angelica Sambrano. Ito yung mga point na gusto kong i-share sa inyo. Okay, lalo na kung isa kang katoliko, gusto ko i-share tong mga point na to. Okay, alam nyo, yung video na yan, kung uh, hindi ka malalim bilang isang katoliko, ay madali kang maniniwala dyan. Kailangan mo tong malaman itong mga sasabihin ko, na hindi tayo basta-basta maniniwala, hindi tayo kagad magpapadala sa mga ganyan. Okay, kailangan natin i-discern ang bawat pinapanood natin. Katulad nung sinabi niya, na nakita niya daw si Pope John Paul II sa Impyerno. Isipin natin guys, sa dami-dami ng mga tao na makikita niya, bakit si Pope John Paul II? Bakit yung ibang leader ng, ng ibang religion eh, ay hindi niya nakita? Isipin nyo yun guys. Alam nyo ba na si Pope John Paul II, eto nakikita ko dyan, si Pope John Paul II, alam nyo yung sinabi niya na yun ay sobrang imposible yun guys. Bakit? Dahil maraming exorcism right na mga uh, exorcist priest na tuwing binabanggit nila si Saint John Paul II or si Pope John Paul II, the demons, the devil is trembling. Talagang nanginginig tuwing humihingi yung pare ng intercession kay Pope John Paul II. At tinanong ng pare, bakit siya takot at takot kay Pope John Paul II? Alam nyo anong sinagot ng, ng demonyo? na marami daw dinala si Pope John Paul II na mga kabataan sa Diyos. Maraming kinuwang kabataan sa demonyo si Pope John Paul II. At alam naman natin yun na maraming dinala na youth si Pope John Paul II papunta sa Diyos. He really evangelized many youth closer to God, closer to Jesus. Mismo yung devil nag-confess sa pare nung mismong exorcism right. At kinonfirm din to ni Father Darwin Gitgano, isang exorcist priest sa Bohol, na sa isang exorcism rite niya din, tinanong niya din yung pasyente niya nung nagperperform siya ng exorcism, uh, bakit siya natatakot kay Pope John Paul II? Alam nyo sabi nung uh, napopossess, because Pope John Paul II is a true servant of wow! God. Amen! Ito nakakatawa. At nung nagbanggit na si Father Darwin, ng mga pangalan, ng mga founder ng ibang church. Okay, alam nyo, yung devil, yung napopossess ay natawa. <laughs> yes, talaga natawa daw, natawa daw yung napopossess. Alam nyo, sabi daw nung, nung napopossess, hindi ako natatakot sa kanila. <laughs> Dahil fake sila. <laughs> Sabi nung, ano, nung 
na poposes, grabe, di ba? Sobrang nakakagulat. Hindi to scripted dahil during the exorcism right to, at talagang rinig na rinig mo daw yung boses ng ng devil dito sa babae na to, yung ine-exorcist ni uh, Father Darwin Gitgano. Kaya doon pa lang ay sobrang imposible na sinasabi ng batang babae na yan na nakita niya si Pope John Paul II sa impyerno. Di sana, di ba, nung during the exorcism session, ay sinabi ng demonyo nung humihingi si Father Darwin ng uh, intercession from Pope John Paul II or yung mismo uh, or yung mga ibang pare, di sana sinabi ng demonyo. Hindi ako natatako dyan kasi tropa pips kami niyan. Nandito yan sa impyerno. <laughs> Diba? Pero hindi eh. Nanginginig, the devil was trembling tuwing naririnig ang pangalan ni Pope John Paul II. At alam nyo guys, mga faith na si Pope John Paul II ang nag-approve ng private revelation tungkol sa divine mercy. At siya rin nag-canonize kay Saint Faustina yung pinakita ni Jesus sa divine mercy. At alam nyo ba na itong Divine Mercy, yung message ng Divine Mercy, it's all about repentance. It's all about the mercy of God. At maraming mga kaluluwa ang nasave because of Divine Mercy. Pero bago yon bago naging Pope si uh, Pope John Paul, ay talagang na- ang daming persecution ang inabot ng Divine Mercy. Actually, pinatay nga eh. Diba? Pinatay nga yung message ng Divine Mercy. Hindi ito uh, pinapropagate kasi nga hindi siya in Pero, binuhay to ni Pope John Paul II. Kaya ito yung nakikita ko bakit ang dami-daming gumagawa ng propaganda na nasa uh, hell daw si Pope John Paul II. Kasi itong devil, ang demonyo, ay sobrang galit na galit at takot at takot kay Pope John Paul II. Nakita niya daw doon si talagang very specific si Dolphy, si Michael Jackson. Yun talaga yung nakita nila si Dolphy at si, at si Michael Jackson. Pero hindi niya nakita doon si Nero, yung mga masasama talaga na pumatay ng maraming tao or si Hitler. Ang pinakita talaga sa kanya ng Diyos si Dolphy at si Michael Jackson. Bakit sila? Pero itong mga tar- sobrang sama, hindi niya nakita. Doon pa lang magtataka ka na. Kasi bakit? Exorcism of Emily Rose. Sino ba yung six demons na binanggit doon ni Emily Rose? ba diba? Si Lucifer, si Cain, si Nero, si Germanicus, si Judas Iscariot, Legion, Belial. Ito yung mga uh, sikat na mga demons na talaga sumasanib sa maraming mga tao because, kaya sila napopossess may narinig na ba kayo nagbanggit na nasaniban ako ni Dolphy <laughs> ni Michael Jackson <laughs> wala ba diba? very bias yung video na to imagine sobrang sama ba talaga ng ginawa nila nila Michael Jackson ni, 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 ni Dolphy and isipin nyo ganun ba si, si Lord Ganun ba ang Diyos? Ganito ba si, si Lord na kailangan magbanggit siya ng mga pangalan ng mga tao na nasa impyerno para patunayan na totoo talaga ang impyerno? Ganun ba talaga tumingin si Lord? Si Lord, pantay-pantay siya tumingin. Bakit niya kailangan i-brought up pa si Dolphy, si Michael Jackson, para sabihin na totoo ang impyerno? Kasi bakit? Noong apparition sa Fatima, yung tatlong bata doon ay dinala rin ni Mama Mary sa impyerno. Pinakita ni Mama Mary kung ano ang impyerno. And ano yung sinabi ng mga bata? Nagsabi ba sila doon ng, ng mga pangalan na nakita nila doon? ba? Diba? Wala akong nababasa na meron silang nakita na mga pangalan ng mga sikat or celebrity doon. Pero ano yung naging mensahe ng mga bata? That the devil is real. Ano yung kinakalampag ng tatlong bata? It's all about repentance. It's all about pagsisisi na humingi ka ng tawad sa Diyos kasi the, the, the hell is real na hindi mo gugustuhin pag napunta ka ng impyerno. Pati rin mismo si Sister Faustina, dinala siya ni Jesus sa impyerno at hindi niya matake yung torment na na-experience na, 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 na sa mga kaluluwa doon. At never sila nagbanggit ng mga tao na nakita nila sa impyerno. etong batang babae na to, nakita nyo yung sinabi niya doon na nagbanggit siya talaga ng pangalan. Diba? Doon palang sobra ka ng magtataka. Bakit ganon? At etong mga binanggit ko, yung tatlong bata, talagang legit to. 
They are mystics, visionaries of the Catholic Church. Dumanto ng matinding investigation, talagang inimbestigan yung buhay ng mga taong to nung panahon nila. They possess the virtue of being a true Christian. Ito pa yung point na gusto kong i-share sa inyo. Nakita nung bata yung asawa ni Pastor. Ibig sabihin, kasi nga kung saan sila umaten na born again church, ay siguro namatay na yung asawa ni, ni Pastor. Ang galing naman, di ba? Yun yung nakita niya sa langit, di ba? Nung dinala siya ni Lord sa langit, na nakita niya yung asawa ni Pastor. Buti pa yung asawa ni Pastor nakita niya. Buti pa yung asawa ni Pastor na sa langit. Pero si Pope John Paul, ha? the second, na maraming dinalang youth sa Diyos ay nasa imperno. Grabe! Etong si Pope John Paul II, ang dami niyang ginawa para sa simbahan, ang dami niyang ginawang kabutihan para sa Diyos. He served God all his life and yet, ganun ba talaga kabagsik ang Diyos para dalin si Pope John Paul sa imperno? Grabe naman yung, yung Diyos na sinaserve nila. Hindi yun yung God na sinaserve ko. I have a big God that bigger than all our sin. Kaya nga ano bang message sa Divine Mercy na lahat ay gagawin ni Lord sa mga kaluluwa para hindi ito mapunta sa impyerno. Ito yung message ng Divine Mercy. Di ba, hahabulin ka ng mercy ng Diyos na kailangan mong tanggapin si Jesus sa buhay mo until your last breath, Jesus will be there for you to accept Him. Sa so, tingin nyo ba, hindi tinanggap ni Pope John Paul II si Jesus sa buhay niya? I don't think so. Hindi man perfect si Pope John Paul. Kasi tao siya eh. Even Peter, hindi siya naging perfect na head of the apostles. And even... Our Pope, mga Pope ngayon, hindi sila perpekto. Pero naniniwala ako, they strive every day to love and follow Jesus. So yun, ito pa yung point ko. Kanta daw sa langit, may narinig daw siyang kanta sa langit, binanggit niya Hillsong. Hey, I'm not against Hillsong ha. Magaganda yung kanta ng Hillsong. Nakikinig ako sa kanta ng Hillsong. Pero guys, Hillsong, kanta sa langit. Imagine that. <laughs> Ang Hillsong ay gawa ng tao. ba diba sabi nga, hindi mo kayang i-describe. Yung mga, yung mga anghel sa langit, they worship Jesus, they worship God. Araw-araw, ganun ginagawa nila. Kumakanta sila doon sa langit by worshiping Jesus, by worshiping God, by worshiping the Holy Trinity. Sabi nga, ba diba, na there are hymns in heaven na hindi natin, na, hindi mo maiintindihan. It's not on human language. Kasi, ang ang language natin, hindi nun kayang ipaliwanag at i-express how good, how how great our God. Pero yes, ginagamit ni Lord ang salita natin on on our own capacity to worship Him. Pero sa langit ay may Hillsong. Nandun pala yung kanta ng Hillsong. Dun ka pala, dun, dun magtataka ka eh. Bakit? Ano ba sabi sa tungkol sa music in heaven? Sabi sa Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Okay, emphasize natin dun yung songs from the Spirit. Sinabi ba dito, songs from the hill song? Hindi. <laughs> songs from the Spirit. Ibig sabihin, may language na hindi kayang maintindihan natin in our own human capacity, in our brain. At ganun mag-worship ang mga angels and saints in heaven. Sabi nga sa Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19, Singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and, and making music to the Lord in your hearts. Ako maniniwala pa ako marinig kung narinig niya doon sa sa langit ay yung Psalms because it is it is biblical. And then sasabihin niya na narinig narinig niya daw yung kanta ng Hill Song sa langit. Okay, disclaimer lang. I love the song of Hill Song. Magandang song ang ang kanta ng Hill Song. Pero very biased talaga yung yung video na to. Puro in favor sa Born Again. At ito pa isa sa point na gusto ko i-share sa inyo. Ang una talaga niya nakita doon yung asawa ni Pastor. Pero, hindi niya nakita yung Holy Family. Si Saint Joseph, si Mama Mary, si Jesus, di ba? Kasi usually, yung mga mystics, 
ng Catholic Church, yung mga visionaries, yung mga seers? Ano yung usually na nakita na nabibisyo na, na, nila sa langit? Mga nakita nila. Ang unang-unang sumasalubong sa kanila si Mama Mary. At ito mismo yung na-experience ni Father Michel Red Rodriguez. Okay, kung di mo kilala si Father Michel Rodriguez, he is a Catholic priest, a exorcist priest. He is also considered as a church mystic and visionary kasi yung mga na-receive niyang private revelation from the Lord. Meron akong gustong i-share sa inyo na na-experience ni Father Michel na nagkaroon siya ng private revelation from Padre Pio. At dito, dinala siya ni Padre Pio sa purgatory at sa langit. Tignan nyo yung pagkaka-explain ni Father Michel dito. At makikita nyo na hindi bias <laughs> okay, si Father Michel sa mga describe niya. Unlike dito sa uh, nakita ng bata na talagang kitang-kita na this is a anti-Catholic uh, propaganda. Okay, so watch this video. So I will begin uh, with uh, the experience I have uh, with Father Pio. So two years ago, Father Pio came uh, during the night and he takes take me with him. He takes me into heaven. And then uh, when we arrive in heaven, you know, first of all, uh, like I saw, I said, I saw Elijah, I saw St. John the Baptist, and I saw Father Pio. So when Father Pio bring me in heaven, he, he, at that moment, he was not talking with his mouth. He was just looking at me, and I can hear him. But after a while, he, he talked with his mouth. So he took my hand, and uh, I was afraid to go there, you know. And uh, I saw this, uh, it's like a fence appearing, you know, golden fence. So I was afraid to go there. And I said, because in my theology, <laughs> when you go to heaven, you die. <laughs> and uh, so he, he laughed a little bit and he, he said to me, take my hands, I will be with you. Don't be afraid. So I take his hand, but in the same time I said to him, you know, if I go there, I will die. <laughs> so, and he answered back to me, did you ever die? You have already died four times. Why are you afraid? <laughs> and it's true, I was reanimated four times, you know. And uh, I was not afraid at that moment. So I understand that I don't have to be afraid to be with him. So we, got, we go together and when we enter there, it was a special experience, you know, because when I enter there, I can see the road in front of me designing. And when I was looking everywhere, I was so much surprised. The color, the nature, the nature was there. And I can see the flower. The flower was so nice, you know, different flowers. But we have two kinds of flowers who dominate there in heaven. The first kind was the roses. They were everywhere. And the roses are the flower of the Virgin Mary. And, but the, you know, the roses was alive. I can see that the roses was alive. And, Father, if you explain me that these roses represent each person on earth. Wow. So you have, uh, already, you are in the garden of the Lord. You know? And when we die, we go. This roses is no more there to represent you. You will be there if you are faithful to the Lord. So we continue, and uh, what was striking a little bit me, I saw a little animal there. I saw a dog passing. I said, how oh, come the dog is here? <laughs> 
But he explained to me that uh, when Jesus died, he died not only for our salvation, but he renewed everything. Everything will be renewed by the redemption of Jesus. And a day we will have a new heaven, a new earth, and it will be all renewed with the gift of the redemption of Christ. So this is what it represents. Little Michael is so strong because they have a lot of people. Huh? Yes, he's strong. He's strong, yeah? He can be a little bit uh, lower. <laughs> yeah, lower because a lot of people come back. <laughs> So, when we are looking together, and uh, I saw the smoke coming, and suddenly we made different, you know, and I see like a, a, a holy of the holy. So, it means that this place is reserved for the Holy Trinity. <laughs> it's really strong, you know. <laughs> Yeah. I will talk <laughs> from a distance. Yeah. So it's made really that the place uh, was reserved to the Holy Trinity. When we enter there, in front of me appeared a big mentor. A mentor, and in the mentor appeared the Holy Family. Jesus, the Virgin Mary, and Saint Joseph. You know, the Virgin Mary is so beautiful. The, the skin of the Virgin Mary is so pure. We have nothing compared to that on earth. I assure you. And she is real. It means she, this is her body who was there also. Because of the assumption of the Virgin Mary. Huh? And we have Saint Joseph, who is really, really beautiful and a strong man. So Saint Joseph is really a strong man. He was around, uh, I would say, appearing to me around 40, or more than that. And uh, he was really strong. And the capacity he had, you know, it's from him. Everything come from from him was so strong that I understand now when we are praying and saying that he is the terror of the devil. And uh, he talked to me and uh, he said different things to me, but he talked about the purity. You know, the purity of Saint Joseph, I think it's really needed now, partially for the families. And I talked to the men about you know, the fathers on earth has a responsibility of purity in their family. You must be guardian of the purity of the family. It means that everything who can attack the purity of the innocence of your little children, this is not from God. And you are responsible about that. Partially today. You know that uh, in our area, they are teaching how to make love to the young to the, uh, starting at the kindergarten now in our school. And this, they are completely disturbed by that. So the parents had the authority to go to the school and said, I doesn't want my children when you are saying this, to listen to that. This is important, you know. If everything, you do let everything going on, your, the hurt of your son and the family will be there. And also, the fatherhood of Saint Joseph. You know, the fatherhood of Saint Joseph was a care for the, the Virgin Mary and for the baby Jesus. And this fatherhood was so strong. You know why? Because Saint Joseph represents the fatherhood of the eternal father on earth. He was the face of the eternal father 
for the baby Jesus. And he told me that he died before Jesus. I never said that before. I think he told me a lot of things, but this thing he said that he died before Jesus. You know, was going for his public ministry because he has to be, you know, no more on earth because Jesus will reveal the eternal Father. And by humility and by his humble heart, it was preferable for him not to be on earth. That nobody will interpret wrongly, you know, his fatherhood for Jesus. This is really great. Huh? And uh, after that, the Virgin Mary speak also to me, and what was shocking me a little bit, you know, shocking in the good sense, it's because she asked me to take the baby Jesus on my arm. And uh, when she asked me, you know, I feel so ashamed, I would say, uh, not to, you know, the dignity was not enough. And I said to her, how can I have the baby in my, you know, and she replied immediately, and I understand now that I have no choice. <laughs> she replied, did you not take the body of my son in every Eucharist that you celebrate? So I understand that uh, you know, sometimes you just do what they want you to do. Uh, and she gave me the baby Jesus. When I took it, I was so much happy. My heart was so beating strongly. The joy in me was so great that I, I have been out of the experience. But when I returned, you know, for to 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 lay down, I was immediately brought back with the baby Jesus in my heart. So when I I'm saying that we need now to put the Holy Family in our family home. You know, the scene of the Holy Family. It means Jesus, the baby Jesus, huh? the Mother of God, the Virgin Mary, and also Saint Joseph, who represent the, the Holy Family. And it means that a family, a Christian family, as a model of life, and we will found our model of life in them. After that, you know, it's a long experience, but he showed me many things. Uh, and uh, after that, the uh, Saint uh, Padre Pio bring me to the, pur the Purgatory. When I entered there, it was a big, large space, and I saw the people with a little table in front of them. They had a, a hood, you know, like that. And they were just looking down. So he said, look, I saw many of them. And I said, who are they? And he answered, look again. So I look again, they have no more their hood on, but I cannot see the face. It was, you know, uh, as a, a little cloud in front of them that I cannot see through it. And he said to me, they are priests. And I can see some with cross on their chest, bishops. And I see some hope since long time. He said, they have nobody to pray for them. Because when they die, the people say always, they are in heaven, they were priests. It's terrible, this thing. Right? <coughs> so they don't pray for them. And uh, when uh, he asked me to celebrate the Friday Mass for them, that they can be entering in heaven. I have also other experience of purgatory. One of the most uh, nearest experience of you 
was here when I visit uh, New York the last time. I don't remember, I don't have the good memory for that because it's all in English, you know, the names. And, you know, I went to a place where it was like a memorial of the dead, of the person who died during the two towers fall. <laughs> but it was, you know, the two towers were on this side. And we, we went on the other side of the, the seat there, like an island. And uh, they have a memorial there. It's a, a lady who bring us there, you know. So I was going with the others, and when I was entering there, I had this this experience. I saw the soul who were dead, but the soul of this region, particular region, they came to me, begging me for prayers and prayers, and it was so, so intense, you know, and immediately after, you know, the other came, the other from the, the, the two towers who died, came all together, I think they were all around 3,000, something like that, you know, and at that moment, it was so deep, and I entered deeply in the purgatory, I discovered that we have seven levels in purgatory. Where, when we go down, worse is the pain of purification for them before to go to heaven. At the last part, I can saw, see sorry, I can see the the soul beaten by the devil. They were beaten by the devil as their purification. You know, you understand what I mean? They were, they were not in hell. This is different. This is at the last level. So at that moment, some soul goes high, quickly. I was explanation of that. You know, it's because of the celebration of the Mass for them. When the Mass are celebrated for the deliverance of the soul of purgatory, some need many some need some few, and some with some grace. And I will tell you the grace is the merciful rosary. You know, the rosary of, of the divine mercy. This is how we call that. You know, I have to translate it. So, the divine mercy rosary gave a special grace to bring rapid, quickly, I would say, quickly the soul to heaven. So when someone are dying, or when someone just passed away, pray the Divine Mercy Rosary. In the hell, I never went, and I don't want to go. <laughs> but I know that the devil, because of the exorcism, exorcism I made in my life, and a day I was making an exorcism, season, and I don't have too much time because I have to teach the course to the seminary. And, and I, you know, I accept this exorcism, but it was, you know, an exorcism, you begin with that, and you never know when you finish. It's dependent on the will of the Father. You know? Sometimes it can take two days, one day, sometimes it can be three weeks, sometimes it can be two years. This, this is a ministry, huh? when you, you begin this ministry, we never know when it ends. But you know, I was there and I, I went to pray uh, Jesus at the tabernacle and I said to Jesus, you must do something. I don't have more time and I cannot come back if we, you know, we saw it what was hard. So I asked the Saint Michael to come. And when I entered the room, I started, you know, the, <laughs> the exorcism prayer again, and St. Michael appeared. I saw St. Michael three times in my life. And he appeared. St. Michael was, I will say, so tall, like 15 feet in front. So I saw him there, and I saw him with his sword. 
a training spur was so high, you know. And I asked him, I did it. I said, please send Michael to my patron, carry me to for this case. And he just make a smile. <laughs> He's so nice. And he just do it, you know, with the sword. And I can see the flame of the sword coming down and touching. It was a man. Touching this man. And immediately, when the flame of Saint Michael touched this person, the wind of the devil goes out. And it is a, you know, my experience showed that uh, the devil goes always in the earth. And my assumption, now this is not from the teaching of the church, this is from my Michel, okay. I will say that the, I think that the hell is in the center of the earth. Because every time that I have it, he entered in the, in the earth. Grabe, di ba? Sobrang nakaka-bless yung shinier ni Father Michel. Before I end, gusto ko i-share sa inyo tong verse na to. From Matthew 7 verse 15, sabi dito, Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. Bilang isang katoliko, ay dapat talaga tayong lumalim in our Catholic faith. Marami pang maglalabasan na ganitong video. Marami talagang aatake sa mga saints natin, di ba, kay Mama Mary, at even in our Catholic doctrine. Gugulo sa pananampalataya mo bilang katoliko. Maging uh, discerning tayo sa mga pinapanood natin. Okay, kaya ako din ginawan ng reaction etong video na to, kasi maraming mga katoliko talaga ang pwedeng maniwala dito. Sasabi nila, grabe naman si Pope John Paul II na sa impyerno, ganun pa, masama pala yon Ginudge na nila si Pope John Paul without knowing kung ano talaga yung story behind that, that video na para maniwala tayo kagad dito. And I hope na nakatulong sa'yo itong mga shiner ko. Kung napanood mo na din tong video na to regarding sa testimonial ng, isang, ng batang to. And I'm praying for her. Okay? Kung sino man siya kung ano man nasa likod ng video na to, ano mang propaganda ang gustong ipakalat, kung ano mang intention sa likod ng video na to. Let's pray for all our leaders in our Catholic faith. Okay? Let's pray for the church. At pagdasal din natin yung mga kapatid natin sa ibang pananampalataya. Especially yung mga taong galit na galit talaga sa katoliko. Let's pray for them. Kung sa tingin mo na nakatulong sa itong video na to, at kung sa tingin mo na nabless ka sa vlog na to, make sure na i-share mo to sa mga friends and relatives mo. Okay? Sa mga Facebook friends mo. And wag mo ding kakalimutan na i-like at mag-comment ka sa baba ng video na to. Okay? Once again, I'm Brother Adrian Milag. Praying for you always. God bless you more abundantly. Bago mo i-close tong video na to, meron akong mahalagang tanong sa iyo. Isa ka bang mabuting tao pero hindi mo alam paano i-handle ang finances mo? Hindi mo alam paano palaguin ang pera mo? If yes, meron akong pangalawang tanong sa iyo. Gusto mo bang malaman kung paano ka pwedeng kumita ng milyon through the stock market? Yes, tama ang naririnig mo. Kung hindi ka interesado, pwede mo nang i-close tong video na to. Pero kung gusto mong malaman kung paano ka pwedeng mag-invest sa stock market at kumita ng milyon, tapusin mo itong video na ito. Alam ko marami sa inyo ang mag-agree sa akin dito that this pandemic taught us many lessons in life. At isa sa naging impact sa akin ng pandemic na to that made me uh, realize is yung maging intentional ako sa pag-save at pag-invest ko. Kasi sabi nga ng isa sa financial mentor ko, eto tandang-tanda ko to palagi, itong uh, financial advice niya sa akin. Sabi niya sa akin, that you saw in times of famine. Talagang tumatak to sa akin, that's why itong uh, crisis na na-experience natin ngayon, ito yung opportunity sa atin na mag-save at mag-invest through the stock market. Bakit? Dahil Ang, ang stock market is tested and proven na to. In times of uh, mga crisis na, na ganito, mga famine, na itong mga biggest company okay, na nandyan sa stock market, ay they can bounce back easily okay, after this crisis. Kaya nilang 
bumalik ka agad at makarecover pag, pagtapos ng crisis na to. That's why tama yung financial mentor ko that you saw in times of famine. I'm really blessed dahil merong isang community na tinatawag na Truly Rich Club. So, ano nga ba tong Truly Rich Club? This is a financial platform na dito ka tuturuan ng mga do's and don'ts in investing in the stock market. Itong Truly Rich Club ay founded by Brother Bo Sanchez. Kung hindi mo kilala si Brother Bo Sanchez, isa siyang proud Catholic. Alam mo ba yon? Isa siyang Catholic preacher at the same time, isa din siyang financial mentor. Ang tao nga sa kanya is isa siyang misyonaryong milyonaryo. Natuto siya mag-save at mag-invest sa stock market. So, ano nga ba itong Truly Rich Club? Alam mo, ang stock market, uh, marami sa atin iniisip na parang komplikado, na mahirap. Pero sa totoo lang, stock market para lang yung ABC. Kung meron lang tamang mentor at community uh, na magtuturo sa iyo. If you want to know more about stock market, I invite you to join the Truly Rich Club. Kung ano nga ba ang Truly Rich Club, ipapanood ko sa iyo itong video na to by Brother Bo Sanchez. Hi, my name is Bo Sanchez. Do you want guidance for your financial growth? Alam ko, meron ka mga financial dreams. Meron ka mga pangarap sa buhay. Gusto mong tumulong sa mga mahal mo sa buhay. There are certain dreams that you have and they require money. Gusto mong mag-donate sa simbahan. Ang dami mong kabutihan na gusto mong gawin. And what I'd like to share with you is we started 13 years ago the Truly Rich Club. Ang dami-dami na namin natulungan para Paano ba? Paano ba mag-grow? Paano ba mag-save? Paano ba mag-invest? Paano ba mag-invest sa stock market? Paano ba magkaroon ng bagong mindset na iba na ang relationship mo sa pera? Healthy na! You know? For many people, it's a dysfunctional relationship. No, we, we're gonna help you have a healthier relationship with money. Babalik ako sa stock market. We will even tell you what stocks to buy and what stocks to sell. Every month, we're going to do that. We're going to guide you. You know, um, I, we've had the joy. Now, for the past 13 years, marami na kaming mga members na nakita namin na go grow sa financial life. Yung iba naging millionaire na at multi-billionaire after years of investing. Friends, can I warn you? Hindi po ito rich quick scheme. Hindi po. Kung gusto niyo po yun, don't listen to me. Naku, maraming scam dyan. Delikadong delikado yan. Ito, napakabagal. Pero, may katahimikan at makakatulog ka sa gabi. Bakit? Yung pera mo that we will tell you, o doon mo ilagay, o dito mo ilagay, mga higanteng kumpanya na for the next 10 years, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, nandyan yan, hindi mawawala yan, parang bula. I want you to know, ito yung gusto namin para sa'yo certain financial growth over time na may katahimikan sa puso. No? And, and I want to invite you, come, join us, investigate, learn more about the Truly Rich Club. Click that link now, get to know about the Truly Rich Club on how you can reach your financial dreams. God bless you. iwo walk through kita dito sa magiging benefit mo as being member of True Rich Club. So every day magkaka-access ka sa God Whisper. So itong Quick Start Gold dito, iga-guide ka paano ka mag-open ng stock broker mo kung saan ka magsisimula mag-invest na sa stock market. Pag nag-invest ka kasi sa stock market, kailangan mo ng stock broker. So ang nirerecommend na stock broker ng True Rich Club is yung COL Financial. So dito iga-guide ka kung paano mag-start at magbukas ng account mo sa COL Financial. Pinaka-powerful dito sa True Rich Club as being a member. Uh, ito talaga yung pinaka-gusto ko sa True Rich Club. Itong yung mga recommended stocks okay, ng TRC. Ito yung tinatawag na Blue Chips. They are the biggest company here in the Philippines. Pag tinawag na Blue Chips. Sila yung mga company na, na nandyan for the next 
uh, 20 to 50 years na alam mo na hindi sila magsasara kasi sila yung mga biggest tycoons and taipans. Sila yung mga pinakamalaking negosyante dito sa Pilipinas. So, dito sa some table, nandito yung mga re- recommended price. Bibilin mo itong mga stocks na to. Hindi ka lang basta-basta kasing uh, bibili dyan ng stocks eh. Kung yung growth niya ba is worth it sa pagbili mo ng, ng stocks. Kunyari, ito, bakikita mo kung 10% growth, 7%. Uh, eto malaki, 57% growth uh, for the next 5 to 10 years kung ano yung magiging growth ng investment mo. Isa to sa magiging benefit mo once na naging member ka ng True The Rich Club. And ito rin sa pinakagusto ko sa True The Rich Club, yung Gold Call. Dito sa Gold Call, dito ini-interview ni Brother Bo Sanchez yung kanya mga wealth mentor. They are the good rich people here in the Philippines. Uh, matututo tayo ng kanilang mga mindset Uh, perspective, yung mga success habits na sobrang makakatulong sa atin, ba? Diba? So, sabi nga, kung gusto mo maging successful ay makinig ka sa mga successful na tao. Isa din to sa pinakagusto ko sa True Ridge Club ay yung mga power talks ni Brother Bo Sanchez. Alam mo ba na si Brother Bo Sanchez, isa siya sa most sought after uh, motivational speaker here in the Philippines. Alam mo ba na yung mga company Yung mga malalaking company ay binabayaran si Brother Bo Sanchez ng almost 300,000 pesos wow! para lang mag-talk siya okay? sa mga event nila. And dito sa True The Rich Club, ma-access mo yung mismong mga inspirational talk. Tinutalk ni Brother Bo Sanchez sa mga company na yan. Ayan, so dito sa TRC, ma-access mo siya 24 hours. At pwede rin habang nagdadrive ka, or before ka matulog, ay pwede mo tong i-download at pakinggan sa yung cellphone or laptop or sa mga tablet mo. Isa din sa pinakagusto ko dito is yung gold gold class. So, dito sa gold class ay tuturuan tayo dito ng mga financial literacy. Paano mag, uh, mag-save, paano bayaran yung mga utang, etong college fund planning, and etc. Marami. Tututo ka ng financial literacy dito. Magkakaroon ka din ng chance na magkaroon ng extra income dito sa True Ridge Club. So, paano? Through the affiliate marketing. So, dito sa True Ridge Club ay nag offer sila ng uh, tiyatawag na affiliate marketing kung di ka familiar sa affiliate marketing. Uh, once na naging member ka ng True Ridge Club at pag invite mo yung mga friends, relatives mo na or maka office mate mo na mag-join dito sa TRC, ay bibigyan ka ni TRC ng na unique affiliate link na ikaw lang pwedeng gumamit nun. Pag shinare mo tong link na to, kunyari ito, ayan, shinare mo tong link na to sa mga kaibigan mo at nag-join sila, ay magkakaroon ka ng commission dito sa True The Ditch Club. So, isa to sa uh, magandang way to compensate ng TRC yung mga members nila. Yung mga members dito, hindi lang kami tinuturuan paano mag-invest, nagkakaroon din kami ng chance na magkaroon ng extra income. Side hustle, kasi sa panahon ngayon, di ba, lalo na sa pandemic, ay importante na magkaroon ka ng side hustle. So, isa to sa magiging benefit mo sa True Ridge Club. Kung interested ka to join uh, True Ridge Club, uh, dito sa baba ng video na to, meron ka may kitang link. Okay, yung affiliate link ko. Uh, pwede mong gamitin yan para mag-join ka at mag-member ka dito sa True Ridge Club. At pag nag-join ka, using that affiliate link, ay matutulungan mo ko to support this channel. And kung ayaw mong gamitin yan link na yan, no big deal naman yan sa akin, okay? Masaya na akong i-share sa itong True Rich Club. So, ang gawin mo lang kung ayaw mong gamitin yan link na yan, punta ka lang sa truerichclub.com. Okay, so mga ka I invite you to join the True Rich Club. I-click mo lang yung link sa baba ng video na to or dyan sa comment section or dyan sa may description box, makikita mo yung link na yon. Or you may just go to truerichclub.com. Okay, so thank you so much. God bless you more abundantly. So that's it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope na na-bless at na-inspire ka dito sa aking vlog. Make sure na i-like mo at mag-comment ka sa baba ng video na to. At mag-subscribe ka sa aking YouTube channel para lagi ka updated sa mga bagong vlog na gagawin ko. At huwag mo din kakalimutan na i-like ang aking page. So this been Adrian Milag encouraging you to live your life to the fullest. God bless you more abundantly.